I think silver will do better than gold. And I think the miners, which again, they act pathetic when gold sneezes, they go down more percent wise. But then when gold goes up, they tend to go up more. Yeah. Percent basis. So we favor silver on the miners over gold, but gold is the mama. Watch it. And we think mama's behaving quite well. $130 from last year's close. And yes, we're off the high. But when you look at that price chart I sent across, <clears throat> it's, it's, you look at it and say, what, what am I worried about? I admit it was, but then it ended up closing unchanged on the year. And now we're up another $130 from last year's close. And yes, we're off the high. Michael Oliver, the founder of Momentum Structural Analysis, recently appeared at Sprott Money, where he highlighted the significance of gold's performance and its influence on other related assets. He emphasized that when gold is performing well, it becomes crucial to pay less attention to negative indications from silver or mining companies. This suggests that gold's strength can overshadow the struggles of other commodities in the same sector. Oliver believes that despite a recent corrective decline over the past five months, the overall drop in gold prices is relatively modest. The decline amounts to approximately $100 from its peak, representing a relatively small percentage decrease. This indicates that the downward pressure on gold is not severe or sustained. Based on the current market conditions, Oliver suggests a potential shift in favor of gold. Consequently, he believes that gold and silver prices are likely to continue rising in the coming months. Oliver views the recent pullback in gold and silver prices as a buying opportunity, and he expects prices to continue their upward trend. Now let's watch clips from Michael Oliver's interview with Sprott Money. Please make sure to watch the entire video and consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on post notifications so you never miss any upload of ours. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Last year, 2022, S&P down 20 plus, NASDAQ down 30 plus, T-bonds down 30% plus, uh, muni bonds down, high yield corporate debt down, everything was down, big down. Gold was unchanged on the year and nobody noticed it. Hmm. 1820s, closed 2021 in the 1820s. Yeah, it had been up and down, but it closed unchanged on the year and silver was actually up about two, 3% on the year. Yeah, a lot of up and down, but net on balance, how come those two assets didn't go down with the rest of the world? In 2022, how come gold is back to its highs again? In fact, marginal new high. We've had a pullback this month, but actually when we measure it at, at momentum structural analysis, we don't just look at price. And by the way, I've got a real good price chart there to look at. It's a monthly closing price. And if you look at it on gold, you'll say, what am I worried about? Okay. But we examine momentum of price first and foremost, price secondarily. Because usually we find that when momentum trends change, they'll change before price charts will. And if you don't have momentum vulnerability, when you look at the momentum chart, if you don't see a vulnerable situation like a major top being built, big support lines being broken, then you're probably not going down in that given market. I admit for the gold miners and the silver longs, it's frustrating. Those markets are screaming little babies. Gold is the mama. And you have to view it that way. Gold, if it's behaving well, you should tend to ignore what you think you see in the miners and in silver. Because when then gold reasserts itself, like for instance, we've been under a momentum vantage point, measuring our momentum charts, weekly momentum, monthly momentum. We've actually been in a corrective decline for five months now in gold. And yet we're only trading about a hundred bucks off the highs. Okay, was it 5%? Okay. The bears have been selling and selling and selling and haven't made any real gains. And they've had the clock working for them. We think the clock is about to run out if it didn't already run out, basically with the low we just made today, which was in the 1930s on gold. It won't take much reassertion to the upside, like, you know, 20, 30 bucks in gold, uh, uh, one point in the GDX minor ETF, for example. And we will we'll then put out a report and say, okay, this pullback that you just saw, it's over. We're reasserting ourselves back up again. But I think that the, the victor and the place to be in this market environment that I, I foresee, it's already begun, is gold and monetary metals and their miners. Those are the places to be. And in effect, gold said that last year mm -hmm. when it didn't go down, when the rest of the world got double digit beat up. It was unchanged on the year yawning after a bear trap. 
Why was it unchanged on the year? I think because some smart asset managers and also some central banks said, we better get into gold. Yeah. Because when this thing comes unwound in the stock market, what's the central bank going to do? They can say one thing now, but when this stuff starts to come unwound, they're going back to do what they normally do. And that is monetary expansion, cheap money, anything they can do to save the assets that they're put in position to save. Oliver also expresses an interesting perspective on the current state of the silver market. He observes that while gold has reached its previous high, silver has yet to achieve the same level. However, he points out that silver has shown significant gains since its lowest point in September, indicating a positive trend. Oliver firmly believes that silver has the potential to outshine gold in the long run. Expanding on the global market situation, Oliver believes that it is not a prolonged phenomenon, but rather a temporary phase that may be resolved within a year or two. He anticipates the possibility of a crisis unfolding rapidly, which serves as a catalyst for market changes. In particular, he believes the expectation that central banks may panic, a factor that often reflects in the price of gold. Oliver predicts that silver is likely to outperform gold in the near future. He envisions a potential surge in the value of silver, with the possibility of reaching around $24 or even $2,400. However, he emphasizes that this surge would represent a temporary pause rather than the peak of its value. Let's get back to the interview. We favor silver over gold despite the recent pullback. Uh, yes, silver did not go back to its high like gold did. Silver went yeah. back to its March 2022 high, which had been just above $26. Mm -hmm. Now, it took us a couple legs to get up there. Silver, remember, made a low in the 1720s or 30s back last September, a month before gold made its low, by the way. Yep. Shot up to 24, pulled back under 20, so $4 plus pullback, then went up to 26.20. Now it's pulled back into the, right now trading in the 23.20 area. So it's less of a pullback than the one we had between late last year and February, March of this year, which was a more than $4 drop. So you're right, there's an upward zigzag there, but silver didn't get back to its high. People think, well, it's weaker than gold. Well, if you actually measure where silver is now in relation to the low it made in September, it's a far greater percent off its low than gold is. Gold's a $300 plus off its low. Yep. You know, and silver is, uh, you know, it was 17 something, we're trading 23 something. You do the percentages. Silver's a greater percent gain. Yes, it's more volatile. Yes, when gold sneezes, it, it coughs. Mm hmm. But ultimately, in the long run, we think silver is going to beat gold. And if gold does what we think it can do, and I think it can do it in fast speed, I don't think this is a protracted gold bull market that takes another five years. I think this is something that resolves in the next possibly year, no, no more than two. Because I think the crisis out there is, a, is not going to be incremental. I think it's going to be chaos theory type, where you go, bam, you know, yeah. the action starts, the central banks panic. And gold knows that. That's why it was unchanged on the year. Mm -hmm. It was anticipating not what the Fed is doing, which is lagged to reality, but what the Fed is highly likely to do because of what the Fed was invented for. 2,400 plus at first surge, but don't. that's not a top. That's just a pause point probably. And that's, right. uh, that's not carved in stone. We, we put out a report on that a while ago explaining why. But we think one, you've already you're at a triple top on gold on price. If you keep a fifty dollar by three block reversal point and figure chart, you know a point and figure guys they don't look at the day to day. They look at the upticks and the downticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Twenty fifty, twenty fifty, twenty fifty. We've never touched twenty one hundred. Twenty fifty in two thousand twenty. In two thousand twenty two, we hit twenty fifty again. We hit twenty eighty actually recently. So the top tick is twenty fifty. You ever hit twenty one hundred? That's a triple top breakout on a point and figure chart. And we think it's a valid price chart breakout because momentum agrees with it. At that point, I think you're going to have anybody who's been talking doubtful and bearish on gold just simply either shut up or join in. Yeah. 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 And I think you'll see a snap in silver and the miners back to the upside with speed that outpaces gold on a percentage basis. So I think this is gear is going to be very dramatic. I don't think it's going to be too much more fist fighting. I think that we're about through with that phase I think the next part of the year is going to be the breakout and dramatic follow through. Looking ahead, the precious metals market is going to have some really interesting changes. Right now, gold is reaching its highest point and people are starting to focus on silver, which is still on its way there. It's like a spotlight is shifting from gold to silver. 
What's really exciting is that silver has been making big progress since September. It has been gaining value and doing really well, showing a positive trend. This makes us think that silver might even do better than gold in the long term. It's like silver is slowly catching up and has the potential to shine brighter than gold in the future. What are your thoughts on the interview? Do you agree with Oliver's point of view on gold and silver in 2023? Please leave your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos on silver, gold, and copper. Thanks for watching.